people who have done a multi-day hiking trip such as the Appalachian Trail. What is your horror story from the trip? I was on a canoe camping trip on a long narrow lake. My wife and I had set up camp about halfway along the lake and all was well. After dark I went to wash my face in the lake and I see two lights on the other side of the lake. It was only like 50 meters wide. As I am watching, their headlamps fade and die and then something big starting snorting over there. A moose or a bear. It was pretty loud. It was a still night. And so I called out to them hey are you alright? It turns out they had accidentally started hiking from the wrong parking lot delaying them an hour or two and then when they got to the lake they had hiked down the wrong side of the lake so i offered and then went and picked them up in my canoe and lent them a flashlight so they could sit up i think they were pretty relieved to have gotten away from whatever animal that was if i hadn't been there that would have had hours of hiking to get to the next campsite without lambs great dividing range in australia doing it in summer so we didn't take tents just slept in sleeping bags in the open under the stars we had 10 flies with us in case it rained gorgeous except for the one night when we camped near a huge infestation of caterpillars fuzzy hairy ones spent the whole night off asleep and peeling tickly fuzzy things off my face when i was young and broke i spent the night in the redwood forest in northern california laid a large blanket out and curled up in a sleeping bag and some blankets on that in the middle of the night, I woke and turned on my flashlight. The perimeter of the blanket was lined with long-legged black spiders. Standing leg to leg facing outward, I figured they were waiting for some hapless bug to come walking along. Curled the blankets tightly over myself and went back to sleep. When I woke again, it was full daylight and no sign of the spiders. Night 1 of a trip at Sleeping Giant in Canada I believe First night out I am always a little jumpy because it takes a while to get used to the sound of the woods And this was no exception It was a solo trip So just me in a little tent on the edge of the forest Looking out onto a small slope down onto a pebble beach I was having some real trouble getting to sleep The woods were just so loud and my mind kept jumping to serial killer instead of normal wildlife I was trying to convince myself otherwise when I hear some heavier footsteps Breaking twinks My heart is in my throat because I just know I am going to die all alone in the Canadian backwoods. Then I hear a crash and some falling rocks directly outside my tent and I work up the courage to turn on my flashlight and unzip the door to have a look. At which point I catch a glimpse of the very clumsy woodland owl that had just fallen down the slope onto the beach right in front of me. Didn't die not hiking but kayaking my father and i took a multi-day kayaking trip on yellowstone lake he totally underestimated how far away the campsites were over water and what we thought would be a three-hour kayak trip was an eight-hour kayak trip got there and set up camp and enjoyed it but we were supposed to leave to another site the next day that didn't happen a storm that wasn't on the forecast rolled in and we ended up quite literally holding the tent from blowing away we used every ounce of rope thankfully dad always packed extra to tie it down and we still ended up holding the rods from inside the tent the third day had let up a bit and we realized we had to get the heck out that was almost worse we had to kayak back about half through the weather went bad and we were fighting against the wind and rain it took 10 hours to get back fighting against white water on a damn lake i was 15 and i was exhausted cranky and so sore i didn't move from the car the next day lol oh and no cell phone reception Day 3 of 5 was at a waterfall. There were a few large flat rocks maybe 500 feet from the base of the falls that were large enough to fit a tent. So that's what me and my tent mate did. It rained that evening. The rock we pitched on was raised from the surrounding river by a few feet when we set up camp but the river quickly swelled once the rain started to complicate things. The wind coming off the falls was pushing the falls facing wall of the tent in by about a foot or so and rain was pouring horizontally through the space where the two zippers meet. At one point during the storm, I stepped out with the intent of moving our packs to higher ground and while I was doing so my tent mate decided to get a look at the situation as well. Well, as soon as he stepped out, the tent instantly caught a gust of wind and was swallowed by the river, sleeping bags and all. Lucky for us there were a few solo guys in our group with extra room in their tents, but sleeping in a cramped 1.5 person tent with no sleeping bag or pads is not a fun experience in the least. The following morning, we were able to fish our tent and lost gear off the river rocks below the tent was a complete loss as 
both the rods were snapped in multiple sections and our sleeping bags and gear were waterlogged. We had to hit the trail though in order to make it to our next destination by nightfall so we had no choice but to pack everything up and hike with all the extra weight. Somehow, we made it to our destination shortly after lunch and were blessed with a sunny grassy clearing and an awesome dude in our party who thought to bring ropes so we could string a clothesline and try out our gear before the evening. I learned a few valuable lessons on that trip. 1. Minus don't camp in the middle of a river. 2. Minus lash your tent down. 3. Minus bring rope because it's just handy to have. 4. Minus the other people in your party might have to save your dumb ass one day so be humble. 5. Minus get a camp towel a full size terry cloth beach towel is like 20 pounds when soaking wet and I would have done anything to yell at that thing off the side of the cliff if I had been a littering asshole. One day, fresh out of college with no friends in the area, I hiked a rough, unmarked herding trail in the mountains I was somewhat familiar with on a hot August day by myself. It followed along a beautiful streamline with spruce trees and tall grass along the banks. Very picturesque. It was a designated wilderness area with few official recreational trails nearby. However, because it was in the tall grass and I wore pants worried about ticks, I got hot really fast, sweating up a storm. I came to a nice bend in the riverway out in no man's land. I stopped at this point and decided that river was looking extra inviting so I stripped down to nothing and waded into the water wasn't worried about anyone stumbling upon me as no one really knew about this trail. The water was ice cold and deeper than I thought but totally worth it. After cooling down sufficiently I decided to go see what was around that river bend. Wading through the water at chest depth I was relatively silent. Got closer to the bend and peered around the corner slowly saw more spruce trees. A rock then another small spruce tree and next to that a giant bull moose in the water having a nice drink i froze he was less than 50 feet from me and he didn't know i was there because i was so silent trying my hardest not to make a sound while also panicking i slowly but quickly turned around in the water and rushed back to shore trying not to make a sound except every time i exhaled i said i don't want to die under my breath for some reason i think it was a slight panic attack as i was alone deep in the woods naked in the water with a bull moose i got back to shore gathered my clothes and ran totally naked through the woods for quite a distance before stopping to at least put shoes and underwear on. Continued running until I got out of the woods and back to my car and sat there until the shaking stopped and I could drive home. Too long didn't read I accidentally went skinny dipping with a bull moose in the middle of the wilderness. It was supposed to be a two-night stay in the backcountry in Grand Teton National Park with my parents. The day we hiked out, it rained the entire day and only got worse when we got to where we were camping. Everything was soaked through despite our best efforts. This was far from the first backpacking trip we'd been on, and we ended the day with sleep. I ended up wrapping myself in one of those emergency foil blankets inside my sleeping bag to get warm. We were so miserable the next morning that we threw in the towel and hiked back to civilization. In perfect weather, every single person we crossed path with the next day was shot with even bothered going out the day before. Moral of this story if you compare your father to Ron Swanson on a regular basis, don't let him make decisions about activities if inclement weather is in the forecast. I've been your dad before. GF and I had planned a camping trip in Michigan but the forecast was rain all night. Since we were 10 camping GF sensibly suggested that we cancel and just go to Wisconsin where the forecast was clear. I insisted that we not lose our side fee since it was non-refundable. Long story short I wish I'd listened to her. Having to dry out all your gear at a laundromat the next day is no fun hiked 50 miles of the Appalachian Trail with some friends after graduating high school. We did 12 miles a day for 4 days. Took us pretty much all day each day to get 12 Albanian mix miles done. Except for the last day, I woke up with the worst diarrhea of my life. Shut my brains out thoroughly at sunrise. We hiked those last 12 miles before lunch. Also, 3 out of the 4 of us found deer ticks. We thought the 4th guy was quite lucky. Turns out he also had a deer tick but he just didn't find it. The poor guy got Lyme disease. I was backing packing in the Sierras with a couple of friends and we were crammed into a small tent. For most of the trip we were in backcountry but had come down to a more established campground to check out some waterfalls. The campground had attracted a sow bear with her two cans so we used our bear cans and left all the zippers open on our packs so she could dig through them without damaging them. Sometime in the middle of the night we wake up to snuffling around her camp. We sit up in the tent shoulder to shoulder listening. There's so many of us in the tent that my shoulder is tight touching the side fabric, and something bumps into me through the tent wall. A bear with cubs bumped into me. We held our breaths until she snuffled farther away, then banged the pots we brought into the tent until we were pretty sure she was scared off. 
As a Boy Scout and Adventure Crew member I have a couple of stories. When I went to Philmont there was a guy in our crew who had a blister on his foot from before we got there and it was discovered on the second day and it almost went from one left side of his foot to the other side. Luckily we were on the way to a staff camp that day where he was sent to the medical lodge and base camp. Later that trip it rained on us so hard it went through our rain gear and two people in our crew got stage 2 hypothermia when we were an 8 hour round trip away from health. One guy couldn't remember our names, where we were and what year it was. The other guy couldn't solve questions as simple as 8 multiply 10 and ended up passing out that was me. And while most of us were asleep a flash flood came in and the water got within 5 feet of a tent. Also at Philmont one of the guys slipped on a trail that was on a cliff and almost went to the bottom. Fun times. Someone had a huge blister. Two people got really bad hypothermia when we were hours from the nearest help and someone almost fell off a cliff. All in one trip. Hiking in the Smoky Mountains there were 5 of us 17 18 years old. We rolled into Gatlinburg and stopped at a gas station. This old toothless guy leaning up against the wall so stereotypical he could have been a character actor said I wouldn't head up there tires a storm a brewing. And 18 year old mean like a complete dipshit replied oh it's okay we've got rain parkas. We mapped our hike not quite realizing the first leg was up a freaking mountain and parts of it were like climbing a ladder. Freezing rain started about 2 hours in then it turned to snow flurries. By the time we got to a campsite we were seriously freezing. My hands were so cold and shaky I could not untie my hiking boots and wound up cutting off the laces I couldn't open my pocket knife and wound up using a portable tree saw we brought. It was freezing rain then snow most of the night and we sealed the tent up so much that frost formed on the inside from our breathing. In the morning there was 4 inches of snow on the ground and I had left my boots by the fire stupidly thinking they would somehow be dry or something. They were curled up frozen on the rocks. We understood we had and were experienced experiencing hypothermia and decided to head back. The choice was 3 miles ahead or 5 miles back so we decided to go forward. Even with the snow on the ground the path was easy to follow. However we had to cross a bridge and we discovered that the bridge was washed away. So, we had 2 miles to go or 7 miles back. The bridge was washed away and there was 3-4 inches of snow on the ground. We knew we'd have to wade across a swollen river with what turned out to be some fast moving water. Picture in your mind 5 teenagers taking off their boots and pants, shoving the pants into the straps of our backpacks and willingly wading through 4 feet of 33 degree water. Every one of us slipped on rocks and went in. The pain of the cold was indescribable especially when that water hit my scrotum. This was my first life lesson in having to endure something you have zero control over. Anyway the last person across was my best friend and it was his car we drove down here. Like the rest of us, he slipped and fell into the river but when he stood back up he realized the river had yanked his pants out of the straps of his backpack. In his pants pocket were the car keys, his wallet, and 200 to get us home. So five dumb ass kids are now screaming in alarm as we run around, in our bare feet and underwear, with four inches of snow on the ground trying to follow the riverbank down hoping we see our friend's pants washed up somewhere. Crazy. Of course we never found the pants and hobbled back down the mountain and hitched a ride with a local back into town. We were so miserable looking that a hotel lady took pity on us and gave us a room with only the promise that our parents would wire money in FedEx A spare set of keys. This was in the mid 80s and before Gatlinburg became a tourist trap place. At night, during the freezing rain, we all heard loud cracks and stuff falling. We thought the wind was taking out branches of trees and I seriously thought I might fall asleep and be crushed to death by a falling branch. But in the morning, looking at the trees, we realized the driving rain had frozen to the trees and that the wind bending the trees had made the ice crack and fall. None of us had ever camped in the winter and we were totally and naively unprepared. How none of us died of hypothermia I don't know God loves stupid kids I guess. Went on a 12 day trip in the Bob Marshall wilderness. On day 2 we passed a mom grizzly with her cubs at about 40 yards away. Got to our next camping spot just before dark. Heard crashing in the water nearby in the middle of the night. Turns out it was a moose. Still spooky but not as bad as grizzlies. Next day found some bear sign around where we camped. On day 11 we were back to this spot as our final camping site for the trip. Saw grizzly tracks on top of our boot tracks. Easy to say we didn't sleep much that night even though we were exhausted. Not a true horror story. But felt the fear being many miles deep. With no means of contacting any help. Not that anyone can help much if a grizzly is attacking and you're so far from civilization. 
I was carrying too much weight. I slipped in some mud and pulled a groin muscle. My wife was freaking out and didn't know what to do and the mosquitoes were insane, making decision making difficult. So we ditched our packs under some trees, tried to figure out where on the trail we were, hobbled 4 miles back to the car and tried to come up with a plan. It turned out there was a county road about 1 8 of a mile from where we ditched the packs. Probably could have just flagged someone down. I was camping in the deep Adirondacks with several friends and when we were packing up my friend twisted her ankle. We had a several hour hike ahead of us and each of us had a decent sized pack. We could carry her or the pack, not both. We were discussing the logistics of someone returning to grab her pack when two drunk 18 year olds we knew they were 18 because they had been floating on the lake on an air mattress screaming about their 18th birthday most of the night wandered down the trail. We said we'd pay them 20 to hike her pack out and smoke them up when we got there. They agreed and went running off. We supported her out and it worked out. The summer when I was 17, my boy scout troop went on a 10 day backpacking trip in the Wind River Range which is a very remote part of the Rocky Mountains in Wyoming. One day right around the halfway point for the trip. A few of us went off on a little day hike, leaving our packs at camp with the hope of summiting a nearby peak. The trail was very poorly marked, and at one point we basically ended up scrambling up a boulder field. It was very steep, and very loose rock that provided little stable footing. One of my friends slipped and sprained his ankle. If I recall correctly, four of us went off on that little hike. Myself and one other continued to the top of the mountain. The guy with the sprained ankle and the last person turned back together towards camp. But even after getting back down to camp, we were still a minimum of four days in either direction from our car. We ended up splinting his ankle, providing him with plenty of painkillers from our first aid kit, and taking as much weight out of his pack as possible to redistribute it among the rest of our group. And then we continued on with the rest of our trip. He was a total badass, and he continued on for the whole rest of the trip without a single complaint. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.